Hi, I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com. Investors returned to equity funds in droves in 2013. Joining me to discuss the industry's biggest winners and losers in the fund flow sweepstakes is Michael Rawson. He's a fund analyst with Morningstar. Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Christine. Mike, when you look at fund flows for 2013, the big headline is that equity funds were the big winners. When you drill into equity funds, um, where do you see the flows going? Where were investors buying in 2013? Sure. For, so for several years, we've seen massive inflows into bond funds, people generally avoiding equities. Well, that reversed last year. Some people called it this great rotation. It certainly happened. Uh, investors put money into equities, particularly international equities. Uh, U.S. equities got some good flows. And there, there was some talk that maybe active managers would finally you know, have, have their year. Well, that didn't quite turn out that way. Active managers had mild outflows, not nearly as, as bad as they had been in past years. So there's been some improvement, but it's still the passive flows driving uh, flows into U.S. equities. Uh, sector funds also had strong flows. Interestingly, interestingly in international it was the developed markets, such as Europe and Japan, which were driving flows, whereas in the past it's been the emerging markets, where investors have wanted to put new, new money to emerging markets. Okay, so you touched on the fact that investors have been preferring passive products, and this is true not just within the traditional mutual fund space, but also in the exchange-traded space, obviously, where most of the products are indexed. Absolutely. So ETS had another good year last year as well. Okay. And you also note that some fund shops have been particularly big beneficiaries of this uh, preference for passive products. Let's talk about a couple of those. Sure. Well, Vanguard, of course, comes to mind. Uh, they had over a billion, over $100 billion of inflows out of 400 billion roughly. So basically had one out of every four dollars going into funds went to a Vanguard fund, which is truly amazing. So they were able to increase market share almost a full percentage point over their competition. Uh, iShares, uh, you know, which is owned by BlackRock, also has a, has a big ETF lineup. And we saw some firms that aren't in the ETF industry start to make inroads or start to try to enter that market. So Fidelity launched their sector fund. So Fidelity for a long time had sat on the sidelines. And then we were hearing some uh, some talk about JP Morgan is going to aggressively embrace ETFs. JP Morgan it's kind of interesting that they've had success through the proprietary bank channel, selling through their financial advisors, where most other banks have not. So it'll be interesting to see if JP Morgan can apply that success to ETFs. Now, Vanguard, um, in terms of the, the specific funds that investors are, are buying, you mentioned that the index products have done very well, but some of the target date funds that buy those index funds have also had a really good run in terms of garnering new flows. Sure. So the three funds with the strongest flows last year in 2013 were all Vanguard. Vanguard index funds, which sit in their target retirement series. So Vanguard total stock market, uh, Vanguard total um international bond market, which is actually a new fund, but because it was a new fund that they wanted to put in their target day ser series, they reallocated from their existing bond funds into this international bond fund, and it got $18, million, $18 billion of assets just basically overnight. Uh, so these funds benefit from the constant dollars that savers are putting into the funds, and that's really the way it should be. Okay. One firm that is not passively focused, uh, Dimensional Fund Advisors, nonetheless does have sort of an emphasis on index-like products. Let's talk about the strong flows into some of DFA's funds. Sure. So DFA also had a very good year. And it's interesting, when you look at what asset classes or, or sectors they did well in, it was no one sector individually, but it happened to be all three. It was U.S. equities, international equities, and bonds. So a lot of people think of them as being just a small value shop, and that's maybe all they would offer. But actually, they have a strong international lineup, particularly emerging markets, and a strong bond lineup. So they were able to increase assets in their, their bond funds, whereas a lot of fund providers had outflows. So Dimensional Fund Advisors had a good year, and they, like you said, they kind of sit on that fence between passive and active. Maybe they use some active approaches, but generally their portfolios are very diversified and low cost. And among the winners for 2013, in your view, are investors who have benefited from some of the price wars we've seen among providers of some of these index products. Um, you note that at, there have been some cost wars, and that has been a, a net positive for investors. Sure. When you look at the assets in, in mutual funds, the assets are all with the low-cost funds. There's very few assets in these high-cost funds. And so uh, so I think investors are benefiting that. We, I mentioned that Fidelity is entering the ETF market. They entered with very low price points. That's going to benefit investors. Another firm that comes to mind is Charles Schwab. It's a smaller asset manager, at least on the, the long-term mutual fund side. But they uh, their, their funds are all very low-cost, and they were able to make a substantial increase in market share. So we're seeing the, the companies that uh, have low costs really gain assets. Okay. Let's switch over to bond funds, Mike. It wasn't as 
as good a year for bond funds. But among those categories that investors were buying were what you call non-core bond funds. What, what sorts of funds are those? Sir, sure. So if we break the bond universe into three segments, we've got core bond funds, very short-term bond funds, and then non-core, more exotic bond funds. And so people were avoiding the interest rate risk that they have in their core bond funds. Core bond funds, generally, the only thing they really give you is interest rate risk and that diversification from credit or stock, the stock market. Well, investors didn't want to take any interest rate risk because there's this perception that interest rates are going to rise as they have. Uh, so they exited these core bond funds. Particularly hard hit was PIMCO total return. So some $40 billion left that fund. Um, the assets really declined sharply. And it wasn't uh, an, uh, a point about Bill Gross or uh, anything to say about his management style is just that investors wanted to avoid that interest rate risk. So instead, they were going into either short-term bond funds or funds that offered some other element of risk, such as credit risk, which might hold up better as interest rates rise. So two categories which had very strong flows were bank loan, which are floating rate credit bonds uh, or securities. And the second group is a non-traditional bond fund. So PIMCO unconstrained comes to mind. These are funds which can, which can take long, short positions in credit or shift their duration from long to short dependent upon their interest rate outlook. So those two categories had very strong flows. A thing to keep in mind, though, for investors who might be looking at these funds is that they're not going to provide the ballast or portfolio diversification to equities that a core bond fund is going to have. So yes, it might hold up if interest rates go up, but they're not going to be there for you when the, when the equity market sells off. How did those types of products perform relative to some of the core type funds that investors were shunning last sure. year? Sure. So the Barclays Aggregate Bond Index, which is a broad core bond index, was down about 2%. Uh, bank loan funds did much better than that. They actually had a very good year because not only did they have a shorter duration, but they also benefited from improving credit fundamentals. The economy was doing better. That's why the Fed is going to tighten because things are, are looking better. Uh, so they did well. Some non-traditional bond funds held up pretty well. Some investors, I think, were disappointed with PIMCO unconstrained. It didn't deliver quite as, uh, as investors had hoped. Interestingly, that Bill Gross is taking over management of that fund. So I think that was kind of an admonition that the fund hadn't been doing as well as he had hoped. Okay. So you mentioned that some of the core type funds, PIMCO total return were net losers in 2013's fund flow sweepstakes. Also in that category, you would say, would be muni funds. Oh, absolutely. So whereas some uh, offsetting inflows came in the taxable bond funds, the short-term side and the non-traditional side, municipal bond funds, it was outflows everywhere. So not only did you have the interest rate risk, but you also had some credit concerns with Detroit filing for bankruptcy and Puerto Rico, which you would think, well, why do I have to worry about Puerto Rico and my municipal bond fund? A lot of single state funds, so maybe in Illinois or Pennsylvania municipal bond fund held Puerto Rico because they're they're tax they're not they're not taxable. So essentially, investors were surprised by this. A lot of them exited the, these bond funds because credit spreads in Puerto Rico debt had widened. Okay, Mike. Let's look at alternative type funds. You noted that some alternatives actually saw really nice flows in 2013. Sure. So the the big fund was Mainstay Market Field Fund. This is a long short fund had about a 13 billion dollar inflow last year. Just phenomenal growth. The alternative category overall has had very strong growth. So that's why we talk about it. Even though it's re relatively small in terms of total assets, the fund industry is really excited about getting their hands on some of this money that was been, has been going to hedge funds. So this mainstay market field fund has had good performance really over the last five years. Uh, remains to be seen if that could hold up, especially with the assets skyrocketing as they have. Has performance been good on that? Performance side? has been good. I mean, the last five years, it uh, underperformed the S&P 500, but it did so with less risk. So what we call the sharp ratio was, was good. Uh, the question is, are some people going to look at their statements and say, well, I would have been better off just in the S&P 500, maybe not understanding the concept of why you would want to hedge. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this alternative category coming out of you know, the Bernie Madoff scandal, uh, a lot of investors are thinking that, well, I don't want these private hedge funds. I want something which is more liquid, more transparent, and then I could sell maybe lower cost than a traditional hedge fund. But um, someone still, I think, has to remind them that these funds aren't going to perform as good as the stock market when the stock market is up. Uh, so we'll see how the, how the flows, uh, can, if they continue to be strong as, as investors realize how strong the market has been. Okay. A couple of other categories that investors sometimes look to diversify market risk, gold and commodities. You noted that they were really in the loser's column for 2013. Yes. I mean, this is a clear sign of investor confidence when people are selling their gold. I mean, it, the gold is, is a disaster trade. It's a, it's a fear trade. Uh, people exited gold. Certainly, we heard a lot of speculation that hedge funds are, uh, were, were exiting gold. And I think it's because investors are more confident in the economy. They re recognize that the Fed is not going to keep the printing press on indefinitely, that they are are going to start to withdraw some of the stimulus. So that rampant inflation that investors feared hasn't materialized. So even uh, TIPS, Treasury Infl Inflation Protected Securities, they've sold off, uh, as well as gold and gold funds. Okay, Mike, thanks so much for providing the roundup. Thanks, Christine.
Thanks for being here. I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com.